Hey everybody, it's Brock, and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family. Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About today. Thank you for coming by to check it out. We got a really, really important discussion to go over today. We're going to cover a lot. This might be one of the longest All About videos we've done, but it's just a lot to cover and I want to make sure I hit on every point so that y'all know the best way to handle this stuff. Today we are learning all about red cyanobacteria, or as other people like to call it, the red slime algae. It happens in everyone's tank. If you've had a saltwater tank, I can promise you, you've had to deal with some cyanobacteria. It's just the way it is. But today, I really want to just go over everything. The who's, the what's, when's, where's, how's, why's, just everything you can know about cyanobacteria. How to take care of it, how to get rid of it, and how to make sure it doesn't come back. So jumping right into it, who and what really go together. So what is cyanobacteria? It's actually one of the oldest forms of life on Earth dating back 3.5 billion years ago. These organisms produce oxygen used in photosynthesis. When and where did this algae even come from? So most of the time lighting and the amount of nutrients in the tank is what causes it to form. And so you'll start to notice it in your tank whenever these are off. But how and why is it continuing to grow in my tank? It is usually because there's too much lighting or there's too much nutrients in the tank. So it really gives it a good ground to grow and eat and stay healthy and just cover your tank. Is it bad? So it can overrun your tank, causing harm to your corals. They will not sting your corals, but it will grow over the top of them, basically shielding any light to come through on your corals. So it can be very dangerous if it does get out of hand. Now, if you've got one little spot of cyanobacteria that grows in a dead spot of your tank, you can just suck that out during your water change. But whenever it gets out of control, like you're seeing in the video, you'll really want to take care of it before it starts causing some damage to your tank. So let's first talk about lighting. So I like to recommend the tank to be lit six to nine hours a day. Any more can cause harm to your corals and it can also introduce a spike in algae growth. And that's all kinds of algae. So you can get diatoms, you can get hair algae, and then you can get the cyanobacteria. Too much lighting in the tank can really, really mess you up and cause more stress than good. Make sure you are using lighting that is saltwater specific and for an aquarium. I would not want you using the same T5 bulb that's up in your kitchen over your aquarium. It could really start to grow some algae we've never seen before. Bulbs do get old, so make sure you are replacing them. LEDs last much longer. I like to recommend LEDs. That's just the new and the improved thing to get over the top of your tank. I have two Hydra 26s over my tank, and I expect to keep those over it for the next 10 years. They do cost a lot, but I wanted something that would last. Not only is right lighting important, the intensity of that lighting is very important as well. So my LEDs have a fancy little app that allows you to set percentages of the specific colors and how powerful they will actually shine throughout the day. So you can see on my little app, I got my whites are only at 25%. And my blues tend to be double that. I've seen a lot of people just set all the colors to 80% to run all day and it will just cause a bomb of algae. So make sure you're actually looking at those percentages and bringing them down so that your tank is accustomed to how much lighting is coming through so that you're not having these big spikes of algae pop up around. If you are doing your levels by PAR, which is the photosynthetic active radiation, most corals will typically like a par of 50 to 150. So as long as you're staying in that intensity of the light, you'll do really well. Now let's talk about the second biggest cause, which is nutrients. This is really where everybody has a problem with cyanobacteria. Lighting, not so much, but nutrients, it's everybody's issue. So phosphates and nitrates are cyano's favorite food. They love it. Whenever it's high, they grow good. So why are my levels so high? Normally overfeeding. Too much leftover food in the tank can cause a lot of issues. It floats around in your tank and decays and just causes those levels to spike up and help algae grow. Now people will come back and say, but my fish eat all of it. I swear there's not a single 
ounce of food left on the sand bed. But that means their diet is producing way more waste for the tank to handle. So your fish are eating so much and they're producing so much waste that it's causing your levels to be higher than normal. I'm not saying feed them less. I'm just saying feed them more properly. Feed them more times throughout the day. Cleaner foods can help this as well. So flakes and pellets are nowhere near as healthy as feeding something like frozen brine shrimp that come in little cubes. That is a very healthy, very nutritious food for them. Now I'm not bashing flakes. I'm just saying to mix it up. I love using my flakes and my pellets. It's very easy to get in there and feed that. But I like to do mixtures of it. You know, feeding flakes one day, feeding frozen a couple days, and switch it back and forth. After food, it comes to water changes. So are you actually doing your water changes monthly? or bi-weekly. So the general salt water rule is 20% a month or 10% bi-weekly. I do about 25% every month in my tank. So it's about 20 gallons out of my 75 gallon, which you're seeing in the video today. So taking out and putting new water in the system helps greatly reduce the nitrates and phosphates. It just brings all those levels down because there's new, fresh, never been touched water in the tank. Filter media is also a must when trying to lower levels. Those should be changed out when you do your water changes. Polyfilter is by far the best product I've ever used to get rid of nitrates and phosphates. It even changes colors to the issue you're having. So I know whenever your nitrates are real high, I think it turns like a dark brown. So you can easily tell in the following month what was going on in your tank and what you could maybe help. Kimmy Pure is also a really good one too. I feel like I should be sponsored for how much I talk about these products, but they're just really, really good ones. It's, I've used them for years. And it always gives me the outcome I'm looking for, and that's a clean tank. It's not in everyone's budget, but a protein skimmer is also a lifesaver on the tank. Now we figured out what causes it and why it's growing in my tank, but how do I get rid of it? Hemiclean is the best product I have ever used to get rid of cyanobacteria. It's the only product I've ever used as well because it's just that good. So the over highlight steps to start with this Clean is do your water change and suck out as much as you can. This product is gonna get rid of the cyanobacteria for you, but it will do so much better if you get in there and really suck out all of that cyanobacteria with your siphon. So normally what I'll do is I'll just use the tube that's connected to the siphon because it creates a really strong vacuum on the end of it that I can just go in there and suck that cyano out. Because a lot of times in really big patches, the medicine is going to have a hard time trying to kill all of that. So if you get in there and just really suck up all the big chunks of cyano as much as you can, it'll make your tank look so much better once the Kimmy Clean has done its job. Number two is make sure your UV sterilizers are off and take out any carbon filtration you have in your filter system. It will suck up the chemical and make your dose virtually useless. So make sure your UV sterilizer is off and you got that carbon out of there. Now number three is dosing the Kimmy Clean. So if we look, the directions are pretty straightforward. So the first one is just the aquarium oxygen must be increased during dosing your Kimmy Clean. So I have a protein skimmer on my tank and that produces a ton of bubbles for the tank. So I've always done well with just running my protein skimmer. I've never had a problem with any kind of oxygen levels being too low for my fish. Now, if you don't have a protein skimmer, I would recommend getting something like an air stone in there that's just blowing a ton of bubbles in there for your fish. Of course, the second one, like I said, turn off that UV sterilizer, take out that carbon because it's just going to zero out any kind of production with Kimmy Clean. Third one, continue using that protein skimmer, but I will say you need to raise it up really high. Raise the cup up way up because once you actually dose this Kimmy Clean, the level that your actual protein skimmer normally skims is not going to be the same. So you can see I did a quick thing after I dosed it just to show you how fast it goes up. And you can see my normal levels are like right here. And now it's dosing and skimming all the way up to here. So the rule for Kimmy Clean is for every 10 gallons of aquarium water, dissolve one level scoop of Kimmy Clean into a cup of water removed from the aquarium. So make sure you get a water bottle and scoop water out of your own tank. I see so many people make the mistake of just pouring it into some water out of the fridge and then pouring that in your tank. You don't want to do that. Get an empty water bottle, fill it up with tank water, and then put your scoops of Kimmy Clean in that bottle. Make sure to shake it up real good. And I will say it does say for every 10 gallons. So I usually just do the exact dose. Dosing more Kimmy Clean 
It's not going to help you. It doesn't matter if you have just a crazy amount of cyano in the tank. Just follow the normal rule for every 10 gallons aquarium water. It's one scoop. Just follow that and you'll be just fine. There's no point in wasting your chemical on thinking that it's going to do more if you put more of the solution in there. Now, six, just make sure to pour that solution of ChemiClean back into the aquarium all over. Don't just pour it into one power head because that power head is only going to send it where the water's moving. You also want ChemiClean to be hitting the dead spots of the tank too. So I tend to make a square around the left side, make a square around the right side, and then just kind of hit anywhere I can. So make sure you just pour it all over the tank. Don't just pour it on one power head. Wait at least 48 hours before doing a water change. That's going to let this chemical sit in there and flow through your filters, th flow through the tank and really clean up and kill all that cyanobacteria that's in your tank. Don't do one any sooner. Now, I normally wait even longer at that. Normally, I do it the next weekend. I do a water change that following weekend because I'm at work. I just don't have time to do it, and that does not hurt anything. You're not actually harming any corals or harming your fish by leaving that chemical running in there, but you do have to wait at least 48 hours for it to do its job. What you'll notice, too, is whenever you do dose ChemiClean, it does create a ton of aeration in the tank. You'll see in this right here. I mean, there's just tons and tons of bubbles in the tank flowing around. And that's normal. Don't worry about it. That is how it's supposed to work. That's why you always try to get a bunch of air in the tank because it's sucking so much out. Once you've waited your 48 hours or you're doing the water change that following weekend, you need to make sure to add that carbon and turn on your UV sterilizer back on. That will get rid of any leftover chemical in the tank and it'll get that oxygen level back to normal. And just the same as your first water change, whenever you do that next one to get the chemical out, do the same thing, 20%, get it out of there and you'll be good to go. So here are just some before and after shots. So you can see it does not leave a trace of cyanobacteria in there. It does the job and it does it well. This was after I had done my water change, sucked out as much as I could, dosed the ChemiClean, waited the 48 hours, which for me was that following weekend, went in, did another 20% water change to get the chemical out, and then this was the following day. So it looked great. I was very happy about the turnout. So now we're at the point we had an outbreak, we got it clear, we did our water change, and things are back to normal. Now how can I prevent the cyano from growing back? Number one, feed enough, but not over. Clean food like frozen brine shrimp is a big help. If you really like your flakes and pellets, make sure to feed it in between. Switch it up, but make sure you're not overfeeding your fish. Number two is check your lighting. Is it dated? Is this old? Is it on too long during the day? Am I going over that six to nine hours? Or is the intensity just too high? Do I have everything set to 100% where it is just blaring on the tank? Number three. Change that filter media, get some poly filter and chemi pures, throw that in there, and it'll do really well on having new filtration, new clean filters to suck out more and more waste. Number four, more current the better. Less current will raise the CO2 levels in the tank, which the algae feed off of. My cyano tends to grow in dead spots of the tank, so a lot of times what I'll do is try to point my power heads a little to the left, a little to the right, a little up, a little down, so it'll hit that spot a little bit more it'll help that sano not grow as well as it does. Number five, stay on top of them water changes. Keep your levels down. Test your water. Now let me say, the algae consumes nitrates and phosphates daily. Some people will test and read zero and be confused and ask me, you know, why all my levels look good? Why is the cyano still growing? Because this algae feeds off the levels. It feeds off that nitrates in the tank. And so whenever you test it, it'll show zero, but it's because the algae is just eating all of it up because there's so much in there. And if you follow all of that and it still grows back, don't get discouraged. That's just the name of the game. It grows in the ocean. It's going to grow in your tank. As long as you can keep it under control, you'll be in the clear. Just follow these steps. Use your Kimmy Clean, and you will do really well on keeping this cyanobacteria out of your tank. After that, we pretty much hit on everything you need to know about cyanobacteria. I know it was a lot to cover, so if y'all do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Or you can look in the description. I got all my social medias there. If you want to reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook, please do. I love talking to y'all and I love helping y'all out.
please like and subscribe i really appreciate it we hit the big 10k not too long ago it was an amazing feeling i'm so glad we're all here together enjoying some fish videos but once again thank y'all for coming out to watch this don't forget to check out dream team forever we got those shirts out there the brand new all about t-shirts that helps support me and my family to get more of these videos like this out there for y'all so i appreciate all the orders that have come through already and i can't wait to see everyone in their all about shirts